Hello, welcome to Rebel Hearts with Christy Reeves, where we empower the rebels of the world. We have another wonderful conversation ahead of us, talking to some amazing people. This time we're talking with Manila. And as you know, this show is all about empowerment, about inspiration. We have conversations with change makers, innovators, the dreamers, the paradigm shifters of the world, the ones who push our human consciousness forward in order to create a better world. But before I introduce our amazing guests for today, I just want to share something with you. If you watch some of the previous shows, you might already know about it. If not, here is some really amazing thing that we are doing right now. As you know, this show is also a podcast on iTunes. So what I invite you to do is hop on over to iTunes once the show goes live, even goes to some of the ones that are already up there, and leave us a review. And every time you leave a review, your name will be entered into a swag bag contest that we're running for the months of May until the end of June. So it's going to be over by July 1st, so make sure you're leaving a review. If you leave 10 reviews, you're going to get 10 entries into the swag bag contest. And we have some amazing sponsors. Every single person who's donating products is really in alignment with what I've been talking about on this show and what I believe in. So the, so the products are all eco-friendly, fair trade companies that really value integrity, organic. So I'm really, really excited about offering these swag books. And we have 10 swag books to give away. So make sure you hop onto iTunes and leave your review. And... I want to say thank you to one of our sponsors, Coffee Reinvented. Coffee Reinvented is a stomach-friendly, cash-free, non-jittery cold brew coffee made with alkaline water. Their coffee is organic and fair trade and completely dairy and sugar-free. Coffee Reinvented is changing the coffee game by reinventing both the coffee and the process, looking to lead the way as the forerunner for acid-free and stomach-friendly coffee. The company is on a creatively innovative mission to make the world a better place, which is what our show Rebel Hearts is all about. And let me introduce you to our guests for today's show, Joey Downs and Nathan Elba. Nathan Elba is known to be gentle yet empowering energy practitioner and workshop facilitator. He discovered his close connection to the divine at an early age when he realized that he can communicate with angels. As a kid, Nathan was sensitive to energies and was fascinated by his intuition and how this can be used to get information, divine guidance, see energies and angels. His curiosity to know more about energies led him to start meditating at the age of 14 after learning that this can help enhance his intuition. He believes he's guided to the awareness of the soul that's inside of all of us and how in essence we are all one and connected. Being curious to learn more about these new and yet familiar concepts that he found led him to read books about spirituality like Conversations with God, Karma and Reincarnation and many more. In 2016, he co-founded Soul Love Center and in 2017, Soul Love Healing School with Leah Bernardo. Through Solov, he found a home where he can continuously learn, share, and expand in a community that supports each other through providing tools and reminding each other of the value of self-love. Joey Downs has pursued her path in teaching and healing with Solov Center as her main venue in fulfilling this life purpose. She began her spiritual journey many years ago while living in Spain, and her growth has unfolded in amazing ways since then inspiring her to create her own ways in making a difference in people's lives. As she learned about children's sensitivities and their energies, Joey was inspired to found the Children's Beating Circle. The Children's Beating Circle is a series of workshops based on ancient rhythmic arts movement for kids that help promote calmness, focus, cognitive and fine motor skill development through bead work. Her knowledge and expertise are further enhanced as she herself learns from each healing session workshop, then applying these learnings to help empower others on their path. Welcome, Joey and Nathan. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show today. It's so wonderful to have you. Oh, it's yeah, our pleasure. It's, it's a pleasure. We're actually very excited to be here. <laughs> 
We I'm are. so excited too. It's been a while since I both I saw you. I got to see Joey on my trip last year and interview her That's for the true. Children of the Rainbow and the work she's doing with the Children's Speeding Circle. And Nathan, yeah. we interviewed you two years ago. Yeah, and so that was much has safe happened. Then. <laughs> 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 and, and so much has happened since then. So, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into that, I would love for both of you to share a little bit of your journey of what brought you to where you are right now. And I know mm -hmm. Nathan, you started at a really, really young age. You were really fascinated with spirituality and intuition and the angels. So tell us a little bit more about that, Nathan. Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> when I was younger, I've been actually really sensitive with a lot of energies. Um, and I didn't first understand it. Um, and I guess a lot of people also around me didn't understand it so much. But after a while, um, I've started to kind of have this um, inner desire to search for more, for more, I guess, more information or wisdom about energies to satisfy also my curiosity at the time. And it actually led me to doing meditations because I, I saw on Google that, <laughs> the reliable Google, <laughs> everything's there, that meditation is a way for you to actually enhance your own intuition and for you to receive a lot of divine guidance. So my cousin and I at the time started meditating for five minutes um, and then 10 minutes and then 15 minutes. And then we tried to do it until like an hour. Um, and then after a while, I wanted to just learn more. And I guess that brought me to doing Reiki, which is um, that level one certification class. Um, and at that time, I actually went into the class wanting to be more intuitive. And when I was there, I saw that a lot of people that went into the class wanted healing. Um, and that actually kind of brought me back to when I was two years old and I would love angels. And I was surrounded by a lot of angel figurines in the house. And I would even ask my dad to cut cardboard, um, a cardboard wing. Like he would create a wing for me. We would stick cottons on it and I, I would wear it and I would run across the village. I love it. And <laughs> yeah, it, it was really a good memory. And then... <laughs> And then it kind of reminded me that when I was younger, my favorite color has always been green. And when I took Reiki level one class, they told me that um, the color green actually is very much connected to Archangel Raphael, which is the yes. healing angel. Mm. And I remember when I was in um, high school, we had an assignment or like a homework um, to ask for the meaning of my, of your name. So you have to look for the meaning of your name. So I did the research on mine. I was more excited to look for mine because the, my spell, the spelling of my name is different. It's Nathanael, N-A-E-L. So when I did my research, it's it showed there that it's actually an archangel. Mm. So then I did more research on angels and then um, I wanted to know the name of my angel. And among all the na angel names... The, the name yeah. that actually called to me was Raphael. Wow. So your parents knew so, why they had to name you that way. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it was, <laughs> it was part of the bigger plan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, and then I started to go um, with Leah in Soul Love, and it, it actually inspired me to do more and to actually empower a lot of people and share love to others. Um, mm -hmm. I guess in every way possible that I can do that that's incredible and how was it when you were growing up did you have a lot of support on your journey especially you know with meditation talking to the angel talking about intuition Tell um us yeah about i actually that. had um i think i had a lot of support at first it was kind of i guess it was kind of um weird for them at first so it wasn't something they were familiar with um but then i i still had their support my parents especially and my dad actually is um buddhist so mm -hmm. in that way i guess he was able to kind of understand it more um so yeah they i had their support but at first it was kind of difficult for them because they kind of didn't understand what i was doing i was just like you know yeah. sitting there with my hands like this <laughs> you know and then listening to all these binaural tunes <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh that's beautiful 
<laughs> and Joey, tell us a little bit about you. What got you on the spiritual path? Okay, well, I, I realize now um, that I actually was sensitive since I was very little, but didn't really tap into it until I was pretty much an adult. So went through my teenage years thinking I was weak. Perhaps that would be the best word to describe it. You know, thinking I was just um, weak and would feel extremely um, sensitive about um, people hurting my feelings. But there wasn't too much information at that time. And I, and I just didn't happen to tap into the information or, or the guides at that moment. I guess it was meant to be. I realize that now. And it was really truly when I had my children that I realized and I became interested in, in, the, in the rainbow energy, actually the indigo energy first and then the crystal energy. And I saw it through my own kids and I started just being very observant and uh, about their energies. And that's actually what grew a tremendous interest in me. Mm -hmm. And I started self-exploration. So I started to read a lot of books, anything I could get my hands on. I started to uh, research on the internet and and interestingly you know the universe brings the right people at the right time and at that point in time people started coming into my life who were guides and who could help me and and that's how i further attuned my my intuition uh, i took several healing courses as well um reiki one of them and uh and that's really how how it came to be it was through my children. <laughs> that is so beautiful. I love that. Yes. And it's interesting how, you know, children can become our teachers if we allow them. Oh, yeah. And, Definitely. And talking about Definitely. children, both of you have founded something really <laughs> amazing called the Soul Love Center for Rainbow Children. Tell us what yes. is going on at Soul Love for Rainbow Children. <laughs> Well, so love rainbow children. Yes, uh, we we founded that I think in July of yes. last year. Mm -hmm. Last in year, July of last year, and it's evolved. So it's still evolving. That's what's so cool about so love rainbow children. I think when Nathan um, and I and, and Leah too sat down and spoke about it, it's you know we didn't realize that it would take its own shape, mm -hmm. and it really isn't purely what we defined it would be, but it sort of has a mind of its own, <laughs> and it's like, oh, I want to be this too, without us yeah. maybe having planned that. So it's growing with us. That's the best way I can explain it. And solo is really for all the children out there. It's it's a venue because at the end of the day, it is a center. Um, but we believe it's 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 an energy, it's a vibration, it's the vibration that these children carry, have, um, and gifted with our with maybe every stands the type of energy vibration and this affects their 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 performance in school, their character, the way they are, the energy that they have in their body. So what we try and do for them in so love is to help them empower themselves with this angel uh, sorry with this energy and be able to channel it in the most creative and healthy manner possible as well as working with their parents and providing the parents with um just empowerment as well so they understand the type of um, energy that their children's their children carry and see it in a very positive way and not so much in you know i don't understand my child my child is too hyper um you know, um, my child isn't thriving in school. Um, you know, we, we've been told to see developmental psychologists. They want to medicate. And, well, you know how that goes. So we are, um, we, we provide the support, the tools. Um, and we do it in a very fun and loving way. I think, uh, you know, we have lots of, um, we have activities. We do a lot of arts and crafts. We do a lot of movement. We do it through music. Um, you know, we do it dancing. through, through dancing, <laughs> dance, <laughs> yoga. <laughs> it's yoga. really fun. Yeah. So that's really what it is. But it, it, it's going back to what I was saying. It is a vibration. It is an energy that we try and ground to put into a physical vessel so that people can tap into us. But we still feel it's definitely an, a very, very special energy. Mm -hmm. And I guess a lot, like a big part of it also is providing a space mm -hmm. wherein they feel safe, wherein they feel that they can be who they are without so, being tagged, without being yes. labeled, without being, you know, um, misunderstood in a way. You know, yes. they're here and they can be 
they can just sit there on the floor and they can actually draw. Um, you know, we have one student actually who's very creative and um, we gave them illustration boards and she decided to draw on the black side. And we said, go for it, you know, <laughs> and, and we were thinking about it and, and how, you know, in a general um, school setting, the teacher would say probably you should draw on the white side, yeah. you know, but these kids are beyond the box. You know, they're mm-hmm. out of the box and mm-hmm. that's where they should be because they're always growing and expanding and going even more out of the box than, yeah. than how they were, you know. And, yeah. and like what Joey said, it's really that frequency, that frequency of these kids. And I guess being in that frequency, they were able to actually inspire us to start this. And I guess a lot of people all over the world, like you, Christy, is starting this because also they want this. They want this to be present here now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and, and I feel like a lot of us have journeys them. where oh. we, you know, where we lack in community or where we felt, mm-hmm. okay, we're different or no one understands mm-hmm. me or I'm yeah. highly sensitive. Yeah. I feel the energies around me and how am I dealing with this? And once you actually do find that community and once you find your tribe, you where yes. people just like see you for who you are, where you're not being asked to be put in a little box and follow the rules mm-hmm. and live according to the expectation of the people around you where you're just being permission, given permission to be yourself. I think that mm-hmm. is such an important aspect. And I feel like a lot of us adults went through these things and knowing that journey or having had that journey, we can then come from a place of, okay, you know, this is how I felt at that time. This is mm-hmm. what I would have loved to have mm-hmm. as my support system. And how can I create that for the children? Because I believe yes. we can change the world by changing the way we raise our children. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. And I know both of you, and I know, I don't know when it started for you, Joy, but I would love for you to talk about it in a moment. But I know, J- mm-hmm. Nathan, you had a really good community at an early age, right? Mm-hmm. Finding yeah. you know, your healing yeah. tribe, so to say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How was it for you, I, Joey? Did you have that support? You know, um, I tapped into it much later, like mm-hmm. I said earlier. So um, I think uh, there was a time when it was really self, um, you know, just self instruction for me. Um, so I'd say the first community, maybe, or the first support group is actually this one, the one I'm in right now. So um, you know, a few people, I've worked with a few people, I, I, I have felt guided, and I think I've had my human angels, like they say, <laughs> on earth, who've helped me along the way and have taught me so much. But the first time I really feel like I'm, you know, blended in with a community, a tribe, like you say, is now, is mm-hmm. now here in so love with, well, with Nathan and Dia, and well, we're, we're, we're many of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids, the kids yeah. too. Yeah. And Nathan, do you want to talk a little bit more about your community and how it has supported you in finding that inner voice and, and mm-hmm. everything that you're doing mm-hmm. right now? Because you're only, how I, old are you, Nathan, yeah. now? Um, I'm 23. 22. Okay. So 23, yeah. 23. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you just turned 23. Yeah, I just turned <laughs> last March 30. <laughs> Happy belated birthday. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> you look 16. <laughs> <laughs> um, looks- actually for me um i guess it's it's very helpful that my parents were you know in a way open to it mm-hmm. you know um they weren't i i wouldn't say you completely understood it when i was doing all the meditation and i was you know playing with you know cuz actually when i was younger i used to play with playing cards but i use it as a reading tool which is mm-hmm. yeah so at that time um they didn't understand it but I guess the openness to just be there was something that was very helpful for me. And I guess if parents were like that to their kids, it would be really helpful also for a lot of kids who are, you know, trying to discover who they are, Mm -hmm. trying to discover their own sensitivities. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I guess that grew when I went to study healing because then that's, a community on its own and then being exposed there <laughs> is you know it's actually a liberating kind of feeling to be with a lot of people who are like-minded and you know who are very open mm-hmm. you know they're very open to a lot of um um i guess ideas and information and they're not very much boxed up mm-hmm. and i like that because i'm the type of person that can't really be boxed you know i don't i don't like being caged like that feeling of 
of not being able to express my creativity or my ideas. So, um, and then that grew. So the the healers that I've met before um, actually are a lot of them are still present in my life right now, and mm-hmm. we are all supporting each other. Um, now I have you know like now I'm in so love, and some of them are doing their own practice in different kinds of uh, in different centers, and we're all supporting each other. And I think that's very important. Yeah, you know, very much representing a lot of even if it's not a healing group, a lot of mm-hmm. you know I guess like even companies or like you know, typical, I guess, standard kind of work, you know, to be supporting each other. That's very important. Absolutely. I love that. But I would mm-hmm. love to have you both talk a little bit about it and maybe both of your own experience. And I also mm-hmm. know, Joey, you lived in Spain for a while. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, how is spirituality perceived in the Philippines and more of the mainstream areas? Talking about, you know, regular maybe even corporate jobs or how is it Mm -hmm. in the schools? Because Mm -hmm. I know I did an amazing interview with Bambi and um, Karen last year that is going to come out in the fall. And they were talking Mm -hmm. about even writing a paper on angels as a high school essay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, you could not do that probably in the U.S. that much. So I would love for both of you to talk, how is it? How is spirituality perceived in the what we would call mainstream areas of, you know, the lot of life? Well, the Philippines is the um, only Catholic country in Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. So um, there is definitely a lot of faith mm-hmm. and a lot of, you know, people are very prayerful and people, you know, definitely do believe in in, in God and a energy uh, that protects and that, um, you know, that, that helps them. So you do feel that everywhere. I think, you know, the general goodness of the people here when, 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 when you come to the Philippines, which I'm sure you experienced, Christy, when you were yes. here, um, you know, really comes, I think, from, you know, because they do believe in this higher energy um, and, you know, they still want to be the best people they can be, um, um, you know, knowing that, that they're that they're, you know, under, let's say, how would you say it? Under the observation <laughs> yeah. of a higher God, right? So, um, you know, when you have that, you know, it actually automatically, I think, um, pushes you to actually do good deeds because you're thinking, well, someone's watching me. <laughs> so um, in the Philippines, yes, I do. I definitely notice this. Um, I, I travel between Spain and, and the Philippines quite a bit and definitely notice the, vibra- the difference in vibration a lot. So I think in the Philippines, you know, there is that really special energy um, and there's just that um, sense of, you know, just a lot from the heart. There's a lot mm-hmm. of love mm-hmm. that pours out from people's heart, very con- a connectedness. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes it is definitely linked to a more religious aspect, um, more than spiritual, mm-hmm. but it's still, um, I think it still manages to transcend, let's say, the, the, the goodness, the yeah. heart, the love um, of the general, of, of everyone that lives here. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's more of an observation. I think a lot of people here have a very open heart chakra, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, but I don't, I don't say that it's only here in the Philippines because I don't really know in other countries, you know, Mm -hmm. but, but basically here it's more like they have a very open heart chakra. And I guess it has to do also with um, the culture of the Philippines, which that is um, we're very, we have a very close family connection, Mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of Filipinos are very much connected to their parents, even if they're married, you know, they're, they're very connected in that sense. And I guess, having that opened a lot more their heart chakra, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you know, like, it's a lot of um, connection, I guess. Um, And and that's, I think, that's the reason why um, we have a friend, you know, like Dr. Joe, who always talks about, um, she's a doctor Mm -hmm. um, in Russia, and she talks about how a lot of Filipinos are actually working um, everywhere in the world, you know? And they're working on, um, the kind of they're in the kind of job that actually um, is more heart connected, you know, yes. like caregiving. You nurses. know, we're in nurses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's um, more in the healthcare area because it's more. Mm-hmm. It's it's an area where in the heart chakra is needed the most, you know. And I guess, you know, it's just an observation. Yeah, I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. No, I'm really mm-hmm. curious to f- hear more about what you're doing at Cell Love with the children. 
I know mm-hmm. you, you mentioned our teaching some of the classes, but give me a little bit more information. What are you teaching? And also, what do the children need nowadays to, to feel mm-hmm. empowered, to find their purpose? You know, I think they really only need one thing, which is to be understood and for people to understand, especially adults. I think they they feel the most sense of accomplishment when they feel adults um, do understand their vibration, their energy. Um, and so in So Love, we well, we do a lot of things. We have uh, lots of different classes. I think our favorite class, and we'll both agree, is called... <laughs> Alchemy 101. Alchemy 101. Oh, and we do, I like that. We do magic potions. <laughs> it's really fun. It's so what do you do fun. in Alchemy 101? I'm curious. Okay, so Alchemy 101, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a potion making class. So what we do is we work with essential oils mm-hmm. and we create, um, we create sort of like a scent or a spray, a healing spray, which becomes a tool for the kids um, for maybe a particular purpose. So mm-hmm. we think of, you know, they can, they can create their own purpose as well, but we generally, we generally have a theme or work with a theme in every class. So for example, um, you know, I'll never forget we once, and, and this was very memorable yeah, for yeah. me when we created, um, the, the potion for safe in the mall. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. So we, it was one of the first yeah. classes wow. and the kids asked for this specifically, and and maybe Nathan and I would have never come up with this yeah. <laughs> with this theme <laughs> because we would have maybe gone more towards you know general safety yeah general already. safety <laughs> anywhere or you they know. were very specific and they were very specific mm-hmm. and you know they actually thought the mall was a place that had you know a lot of very that was very overwhelming has mm-hmm. um high high you know high energies and um you know so many people with all these different thoughts. And that was very stimulating for them, in a, but in a negative way. So they wanted a spray that would keep them safe and know that they would never lose their their mom or their or their their, their guardian Aww. who was with them, and they'd be able to wade through these energies. And at the same time, it was important because the mall's a place you go to with your family. So they they felt they were being unfair if they'd say, no, I don't want to go because it's a family day. You know, you go, you mm. eat, you go to the movies. And so they, they asked us for the spray and we, and, and, and we thought that was amazing. That's really <laughs> the degree of sensitive kids we're dealing with. Um, so that was and beautiful. And it's teaching us a lot also yeah. about them, you know? Yeah. Yes. And, and a lot of them, like, you know, like even they, they were able to actually identify in, where we are, Soul of Center is Alabang here in yeah. the Philippines, where the malls here that actually is more comfortable for them yes. and the malls that are more heavier mm-hmm. for them. And they all said and the they same, all agreed. same names wow. of the yes. malls. And and this is something where Nathan and I were just like, wow. wow. Because, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I don't know if we would have been able to tap into that <laughs> thing. But they, they all agreed and they gave mm-hmm. us an order of one to four which was the you know the the mall with the best energy down to the one with the heaviest mm-hmm. energy, and they didn't talk about it. That's why it was so amazing because all of them said the same name. Wow, you know, and and we even have another kid who wasn't in the class, and when the when the mother heard about this, um, she immediately actually signed up for the class because um, her own kids <laughs> say the same mall, say the same thing, and don't want to yeah. go to the- <laughs> so. Yeah. That is and, incredible. And, and, and that class, so we have, you know, we have essential oils. We, we choose uh, several essential oils and the kids um, mix them and have fun. So they play mm-hmm. with mixing them. So there's also an element of, you know, combining oils and finding a, a scent, which is a, a scent that they like. Mm-hmm. And, and then they each get a little bottle mm-hmm. and they decorate the bottle with stickers and decals and, mm-hmm. um, you know, they can paint it. So it becomes very personalized. They go home. Yep, there it is. That's it. That's so beautiful. they go home. They go home with, 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 you know, with a little spray bottle, mm-hmm. which they use for, for that particular purpose. Mm-hmm. So the kids were telling us um, weeks after doing the Safe in the Mall class that they, they bring it with them in their bag. And right before entering the mall, they spray it mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah. and they feel safer that way and and, yeah. and just you know that yeah. they can deal with the energies. I there. think one of the important things also that the class offers is and I, I guess a lot of teachers also who may who may be listening to this can adapt or can adapt this kind mm-hmm. of principle is we let them actually have freedom. Yes. You mm-hmm. know, like even with essential oils, we we 
our goal actually is to empower them to decide mm -hmm. how many drops they want of, for example, um, lavender, yeah. you know, and peppermint. You know, we don't yeah. give them a specific kind of like, for example, mm -hmm. five, five drops of this or six drops <laughs> of this. You know, we let them smell it and then, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we provide the essential oils and then they decide how many drops they want. And I mm -hmm. guess that's very important because mm -hmm. it empowers them to decide. It empowers yeah. them um, to know that they actually have a choice, mm -hmm, yes. you know, and all of these things, even if they're young, they're going to benefit from this when they're older. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things are going to stay with them when they're yeah. a, a bit older and they're going to realize that they have freedom. I love that. I love that. Yes. And I feel like mm -hmm. it's so important as well to learn about how our intuition. And um, I was, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine. She's like, I'm, which food plan do I need to follow? Do I should I eat this diet or that diet? I'm like, you know, your body actually tells you what it needs. So, yes. you exactly. know, we're so externally driven sometimes that we forgot to listen, forget to listen within. Or, yes. you know, mm -hmm. even when it comes to essential oils, because I'm a big believer in essential oils. I had did some essential mm -hmm. oils even before I came here earlier today. <laughs> Day because I ate something bad yeah. so I needed to put on a lot of thyme oil <laughs> and it helps me and and you know there's so many just sticking with the essential oil time there's so many books out there where you can go oh mm -hmm. you know you need to have five drops of this or this is the combo or these are the yeah. oils that are for this and these are the oils for that so we're being yes. you know again programmed yes. Program, externally yeah. instead of listening internally because it might be something really specific or a very specific mm -hmm. combo that is exactly Absolutely. what we need no matter if it's on the physical level because we have yes. an upset stomach or mm -hmm. on the emotional level because essential oils are mm -hmm. healing our emotions as well and mm -hmm. like can make mm -hmm. us happy or uplift us. So I Absolutely. think it's, it's such a beautiful thing to teach these children to not go like, hey, pick up a mm -hmm. book and read and then you put together the combo. But, you know, listen mm -hmm. within. How many drops of lavender do you need? Do you need two or 20, you know? Yes, yes, yes. It's very yes. personal. So they each, yeah. you know, we, we end the class and each, each one actually has a different scent. So we've mm -hmm. created, each one has a very individual mm -hmm. um, and unique mm -hmm. <clears throat> product that they yeah. that they go home with. So they definitely feel this is really for me. You know, yeah. this one's mine. Yeah. Yes. And because yeah. they're all actually very unique, you know, mm -hmm. and all of these we don't say, you know, like directly, but all of these are getting, you know, I guess programmed to them in a sense that they're unique. They're very, very unique. And mm -hmm. the, the sense that they're, they created, which is their own, is like mm -hmm. them. You know, mm -hmm. they're unique and they're special in their own way. And that's very important to yes. actually remind them of, yeah. you know, and to trust mm -hmm. themselves because, you know, they're very unique with, yes. you know, with all of the kids. They're all equally unique. And, and I guess a lot of that's very important is also helping them to trust their own intuition, their own God instinct, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and this they can apply in their own life, even in school, you know, mm -hmm. and, and when they grow older, it's a very important tool to have. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes. So Nathan, I, I want to ask you, you're teaching Reiki mm -hmm. at Solo. What yes. are the youngest <laughs> children you're teaching Reiki to? Um, actually, we just finished with the youngest group. Five, yeah, five, like five, the youngest five. would be like five, five. six. Wow. Five and wow. six. Yeah. Yes. That's and they're actually very excited to learn. That's why it's mm -hmm. more, yes. you know, it's more... I guess it's more fun for us as well because they're mm -hmm. very excited. Um, and and I, I think you've seen like the pictures also of the kids, yeah. you know, holding the other other kids back and sending yeah. Reiki mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. That yes. that picture. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really, I really special. That. Yeah. And what are you finding? You know, what what do you see happening with these kids? No matter if it's your five year olds or even the teens that you're teaching, what do you see happening with these kids that are learning? energy healing modalities such as Reiki? Um, I guess what we're noticing is that they're, they are actually more empowered, mm. you know, and they're more calm. And we get this a lot from um, parents also. Mm. Um, they tell us, for example, that their kid starts to say thank you a lot more, you know, mm. um, and are becoming more grateful mm -hmm. because all of these things we also teach in class, like, you know, how affirmation works and stuff mm -hmm. like that and the power of your thoughts mm -hmm. you know like yeah. even Masaru Imoto's um, videos we show the kids yes mm -hmm. to let them know of the power of your thoughts and how it can affect water yeah yes. yeah yes. so if, you know you for know. our listeners who don't know about Masaru Emoto's work 
go and Google Google Masaru Emoto, and he's done mm. this amazing work where he placed words on 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 a, on a glass filled with water, and some of the words mm-hmm. were hate, some were love. And I already see the amazing John typing over here, finding some <laughs> images for you. Yes, and and it yes. showed in the water crystal how these words were affecting the water. And since yes. we're made out of water, mainly out of water, mm-hmm. so it's you know it's it's really proving to us how words, positive or negative, can affect the waters mm-hmm. of our body and ourselves on such a deep yes. level. Yes, and Just we are because we are made of water. Yeah. So a big part of us is water. So mm-hmm. you know, I think the the experiment also proves what what's happening inside inside our body too mm-hmm. when we yeah. you know when we have yeah. these thoughts positive yeah. versus negative mm-hmm. and how Absolutely. we actually affect that in others because we are mm-hmm. basically water yes. too yeah <laughs> yeah and a great i think a great um realization from this is that you know more than i guess the water is like that we are we have a power we have mm-hmm. a choice mm-hmm. you know <clears throat> that we have that freedom to choose yes our own thoughts and it's not yes. actually as a weakness it's a strength mm-hmm. it's actually a strength to have the choice to actually choose your own thoughts mm-hmm. and therefore create your health out of yes. that and create the life that you want out of that yes. you know i guess some people get a little bit scared that they have that power you know mm-hmm. over their thoughts but actually it's a sign of strength it's a sign yeah. of um um this inner power and guidance that you have inside of you and Mm -hmm. how much you can actually influence your life you know in a positive way yeah it's that Mm -hmm. i love that thank you for saying that nathan Mm -hmm. i want to jump over to you joey because we were initially introduced by the brilliant leah bernardo thank you leah for that (laughs) (laughs) we're introducing also to to you nathan (laughs) And Leah said, you need to interview Joey for the Rainbow Kids documentary because she does uh-huh. this thing called the Children's Speeding th- Circle. <laughs> and you need to have Joey tell about, talk about it. And whoever wants to see the complete interview, go to the children of the rainbow.org, watch uh-huh. the complete interview. But I still would love to have you talk a little bit about the Children's Speeding Circle, which you are also teaching at Soul Love, right? Yes. Um, so that is based on um, ancient rhythmic art movement. And it's really just a a hand movement. So basically what I came to realize um, is that anything hand movement actually can soothe and calm children very much, especially children who are very high spirited children, like Mm -hmm. the rainbow children and the indigo children. And these are ancient rhythmic arts that we used to practice a long time ago. Um, You know, we used to see it um, through things like sewing, and maybe even washing in the river, certain activities that we used to do. And now because of the electronic gadget and the new era of electronic gadgets, we're pressing buttons actually more than we're even using our hands. I mean, we hardly write with pens anymore. Um, and, and, and everything, even in school, the kids are taking their iPads to school and typing. So there's no energy that's actually flowing um, through hand movement. And it's actually unbelievable how much energy can be released mm. um, from these type of movements. I don't know if you recall last year, about two years ago, um, coloring became such a big deal and, and coloring books were being mandala sold, coloring. mandala coloring books, animal coloring books, and everyone, the whole world was coloring. Mm. And I think, I'm not sure if, if while people were coloring, they were actually tapping into that, that, that through this you know, just very simple activity, they were actually releasing a great deal of energy that that was probably in their body and overwhelming them. So at that point where you just feel extremely overwhelmed and and almost about to explode and your energy needs to release that energy. So this is a very important tip for anyone who has uh, children who, who, you know, are hyperactive or anyone who just feels overwhelmed at the end of the day. It's mm-hmm. as simple as just releasing our energy through anything, which is a hand movement. So it can be creative writing. It can be drawing. It can be playing a musical instrument. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can actually be any type of body movement too. But um, when it comes to the hands, um, there is really such a special connection with 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 the energy yeah. so we can release it and these are wonderful ways of, mm-hmm. of 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 using it creatively as well so we don't only release our energy and feel calm but we we create a beautiful yeah. product yeah. <laughs> in the process of that so that's really how the beating came to be and um mm-hmm. 
And I just realized that the kids had immense focus when they were beading and they were creating um, their, their little jewelry items. So um, it, it, it helps calm, it helps um, the, you actually feel it in the room where, where you're giving the class that the energy just really, really calms down and becomes so harmonious. So the, the body is extremely balanced at that particular yeah. point. Yeah. And um, it's almost like the subconscious is, is in a different place. So it allows the child to be um, just, just really still <laughs> and, and very focused in that, in that particular activity. Yeah. And that's very healing. Yeah. And that just being in that state is extremely yeah. healing. So and I feel like do... it's so good for both. It's good for the children, especially the children that have so much energy and they have to sit oh, yeah. still in school all day long. But it's also, I find our society is so stress-based. Everybody's constantly busy. We're running from one appointment yeah. to the next. So what yes. a beautiful thing to integrate, <clears throat> not just in a child's life, but also into adult's life. No matter, yes. it, as you said, yes. if it's knitting, crocheting, anything with the hands anything. to actually yes. get us out of that high better state that we go in mm -hmm. i'm talking about the better yeah. brain waves mm -hmm. and um actually get yes. us into more alpha soft mm -hmm. exactly you know the yeah. meditative brain wave exactly. exactly even even you know even something as simple as petting a dog yeah will do it that's amazing mm -hmm. that so these amazing. are the type of tools you know besides giving the class and and mm -hmm. and seeing the kids have fun with it because at the end of the day you know they're playing they're they're creating a toy mm -hmm. so and that's that's very enjoyable for them yeah. but um we also give them give them tools as well that's what we try and do and so love and give the parents as well empower the parents with tools and sometimes the parents come and tell us oh but that's so simple because they're actually expecting you know something much more complicated that's going to mm -hmm. cost much more money mm -hmm. so when we you know tell them um, things like, oh, you know, just, just, just have them engage in, you know, maybe gardening mm -hmm. or, or drawing, or, you know, you can get them a <clears> big <throat> notebook and crayons and, and they're like, oh, and that's it. Because yeah. they maybe think we're going to give them some very complex <laughs> recipe <Yeah>. of sorts. <laughs> so it really is simple. You know, it's very simple. <clears throat> That is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I mean, it's so so beautiful how this, you know, simple tools like that that have been around for ages that are ancient yeah. mm -hmm. can yes. actually make yeah. such a difference. Yeah. Yes. Even walking on like barefoot, yes. like on the grass mm -hmm. is really, really grounding for a lot of kids. And it's yes. really yeah. fun, you know, yes. yeah. you know. And that's one of the things that we actually value also in class, having fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is very important. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. So sometimes you kind of crawl around the room. Mm -hmm. yes. kind of <laughs> we definitely, Nathan and I definitely bring in our inner child yeah. for sure. I love that. <laughs> and we there's mimic a lot different of, kinds of and, animals. And there's a lot of healing for us in it too. You know, like this I was, is not just a one way mm -hmm. um, experience, I think. For, for Nathan and I, and we can both attest to this at this yeah. point in time yeah. that, you know, we've learned so much from these kids. It's unbelievable, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in, since July of last yes. year. And and each and every child that walks into the center is, you know, is, is, is just such a fountain of, of, of everything, of mm -hmm. joy and, and just, you know, in terms of experience and what, what we learn and what they learn, um, the working together is just so powerful. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely been, been something really amazing. We've so many kids, we've you yeah, know, which brings me to my next question. Yeah, sure. What is it that inspires you both most about the work that you're doing with the adults as well as the children? What gets you up every morning that you're looking forward to? In my case, it would be shifting, um, especially the parents' mentality about the their child. That, for me, I think is the most um empowering and I think where the sense of, 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 of true fulfillment comes for me when when a parent who who may think that their child is inadequate um, mm -hmm. not coping in school has a tremendous lack in what society you know is actually stating or stipulating that, that yeah. they should be good at um, and um, and you know has a, has a particular character or, or is frightened of certain things has a difficult time or is challenged with other things. Yeah. And I think when the parent comes in, you know, there's a sense of lack of hope. And mm -hmm. for me, uh, you know, the biggest joy is, is being able to transform that energy for a parent to be able to say, you know, I get it. You know, my child is unbelievably mm -hmm. gifted mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, so, so special and, and amazing. Mm -hmm. 
and, and it's that shift, you know, from something negative to positive. And yeah. that would be for me yeah. the most, as, as a parent as well, because I, I am a parent. So I think that's where I feel it touches um, my heart the most mm -hmm. would be, would be when I see that, when I see the transformation <laughs> of the parent, mm -hmm. of the parent. <clears throat> I love yeah, for, that. Thank you. for me, it's for me, it's more like um, waking up every day and knowing that you are a conduit of love, mm -hmm. a conduit of light, mm -hmm. and knowing that as you go through, you know, as we started this soul of mm -hmm. center, that we are getting ourselves more involved in the world, mm -hmm. you know, and through empowering others and also helping them recognize their own light. Um, I know that in a way they're also they'll also get involved in the world, you know, in a sense, and will be able to, you know, make this world a more peaceful place and a more happier yes. place to live in, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I guess empowering each people actually inspires me, like you know, kids or adults, um, to know that they have that light inside of them, mm -hmm. and to know that they have the power and the tools necessary mm -hmm. all the tools mm -hmm. necessary for them to thrive in their life yeah and to remind mm -hmm. them of that because they already know that deep inside mm -hmm. you know it's just reminding them and when you mm -hmm. remind them of that it actually comes naturally they just start to live life mm -hmm. you know you know what they say like like a lot of people are alive but aren't living mm -hmm. you know and i find that very important you know um for a lot of people to actually live their life Yes. You know, yes. and and a lot of times it's also getting involved in the world, getting inspired to help kids, mm -hmm. getting inspired to help others, mm -hmm. you know, um, planting trees, um, all the ways that you can be, I guess, a representation of that light into this world. I love that. That was so beautiful. Thank you both for saying that. And I hope for everybody who's listening, you know, that you feel inspired to be empowered or empower others. Yes. Um, I have two more questions. Well, it's a double question. What mm -hmm. has been, because you know, I'm, I'm going to say first the reason why I'm asking this question, because I see so many people who have a dream or have mm -hmm. a vision or who had a dream when they were a little kid, but they gave up on their dream for whatever reason, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we sometimes feel it's, it's impossible or it's it's undoable or i'm not good enough or this this dream is for others and mm -hmm. both of you are just like such an example of what happens when you live on purpose you actually you know knowing both of you for a few years now you're such a light and a way shower for people to actually find their purpose live their mission and bring it out into the world and change the world by doing so so my question for you is what has been your biggest challenge and your biggest joy walking this path? Uh, my biggest challenge was deciding actually that I would make this my life and, and leave the corporate world. Um, and that was very scary because, you know, there's a lot of security attached to that. And, um, and, and, and I have a family, so that was, that was very scary. Um, I'd say that's been my biggest challenge, and um, and in terms of having to 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 tell the world, you know, like I was a banker, so I'm not a banker anymore. I'm a healer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, and that was, you know, that 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 was that was a big challenge, um, and it took. I think it went really little by little. Um, it didn't happen very abruptly. Mm -hmm. So I was also maybe lucky in that aspect that, um, that I had the chance to take it in very slowly. Um, and I've had family support. Um, my husband's been amazing um, with this transition because I always say he married me a banker and now he has a, a witch. <laughs> <laughs> He has a lot of so, magic at his house now. Yeah. Kudos to him for that. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was my biggest challenge, Christy. Um, but then it's been amazing, you know, landing here and, 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 you know, and I do encourage everyone who is at that crossroad, because I think a lot of people are wherein, you know, they're maybe just moving forward with their day to day because they feel they have to. 
um, but yet there's no sense of fulfillment, no sense of purpose, every day waking up and thinking, you know, why am I doing this? And, and yet there is a dream at the bottom of their heart. Um, and, and, you know, that is definitely their life purpose. And that is the reason why they came here. And it's not easy. It's not an easy road. Sometimes it'll put you to the test mm -hmm. so that you crawl back to, you know, to being, you know, to being, let's say, to going back to where you were. But um, I think for anyone who feels that nudge in their heart and is in this particular crossroad at this moment, there is that nudge for a reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you, Joey. Nathan, what is it for you? Um, for me, it's also actually deciding to go here, you know, like to be completely here and to really devote my time and effort into all of this. And the second thing that's hard for me is also, um, I guess, filtering the opinions of others, mm. you know, because when you're stepping into something that's, that's for them a little bit different, you know, um, they start to say opinions and stuff like that about what you're going to do. And, you know, a lot of it sometimes, you know, you, you kind of start to question sometimes yourself if you're really on the right path and if it's really worth it, you know, if you're really supposed to go there because of what they're suggesting or, or if what they're telling you should be where you should go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, but, but the thing is, it's really always going to be worth it to follow your heart. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's a risk. And the thing is, in life, I believe that we're not really supposed to be, to put ourselves constantly in a place that we think, again, we think is safe, you know, because in higher truth, it isn't really completely safe if we don't accept it, mm -hmm. you know, but our conscious mind always that this is safe you know this is safe and it's okay for us to just be here but but this is life you know this is life and and the beauty of it is to always expand to always experience it mm -hmm. to 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 live it yeah. you know and sometimes i tell people when they ask me the question and i tell them you won't really know the the beauty of what is ahead of you if you don't cross that bridge, mm. you know? And sometimes it's not easy and that's the truth of it, but but it's always going to be worth it because at the end of the day, you know that you followed your heart, yeah. you know? And if life is not for us to be happy and for us to follow what we, what, what we love, which is actually what we're here for and what we're supposed to do, then, you know, what's really the essence of, even doing anything you know um and for those who are kind of i guess a little bit older and they're trying to tell themselves or or talk themselves out of doing it because they're old and they're telling themselves you know i'm already past that stage you know i hear this all the time a lot of people say this like i'm past that stage where and i can change things you know and the thing is you can you know it's a choice yeah and again the choice gives you power mm. yeah over your life, you know, and the choice is always worth it because you followed your heart. Mm. And I believe that the heart is the, the voice of our soul, Yeah, you know, and it's always going to be worth it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's for me. Oh my gosh, that was so, so beautiful. Wow, wow. Wow! Thank you, thank you, thank you, for and I mean, and that is. To, I'm just looking at the time over here, and honestly, I, I just want to continue. I want to hear more and more and more of what you're saying. So <laughs> we Next will time continue we'll be there physically. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like this is such a perfect note to finish for today. And what powerful and beautiful words both of you just and I will finish with. So I hope everybody who's watching is, is inspired now to follow their hearts and live their purpose mm -hmm. and do what you haven't, what you've been dreaming about for so yes. many years. Mm -hmm. And I just want to yeah. say thank you so much, Joey and Nathan, for taking the time to come on the call today. Mm -hmm. it's, it was early thank in the morning when we did this thank in the you Philippines. So much. Thank you for thank inviting you. us. Yes. <laughs> thank yes. you. 
And thank you for all the incredible work that you're doing, changing the lives of so many people. Thank Thank you for your beauty and your light. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you. And everybody else who's listening, thank you for joining us today. Go out there into the world, follow your heart, and we'll see you next Wednesday, 3 p.m. And remember to rebel on. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.